Yo, what's good guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're reacting to the most horrible parasite. It says the brain-eating amoebia. I don't know if I pronounced it right, but that. Uh, it, it seems pretty interesting, so I want to know because uh, anything that affects the brain, it'd be, it'd be scaring me because it's your brain. Like You can't really like do anything to fight back. I mean, you can, but like usually people die when they when it it's like a disease regarding their brain so like yeah you know we're gonna check this out today uh if you're new here don't forget to like and subscribe and uh yeah you know let's watch a war has been going on for billions of years that breeds well-armed monsters who struggle with other monsters for survival having no particular interest in us most of them are relatively harmless as our immune systems deal with their weapons easily but there are exceptions. Negleria fowleri is an amoeba that has not only developed a deadly taste for human brains, but is also a match for our defenses and stars in dramatic headlines. What happens when this monster enters your body? Oh, it's an ant? Hey, bro, that is, in this video already, I'm kind of nervous because it's just that like... Negleria fowleri is an amoeba a microbe with a nucleus, one of the smallest life forms on Earth. It is a voracious hunter of bacteria and other critters that it devours whole and rips into pieces. Like many amoebae, it is able to transform into different stages that help it survive. But most of the time, Negleria fowleri is in its trophozoite stage, during which it looks like a squishy blob with tiny arms and hunts, divides and thrives. Its natural home is in fresh water, ponds, rivers, lakes, and hot springs. But unfortunately, it also feels happy in pipes, swimming pools, fountains, or spas when they're not properly treated. The warmer the water, the more it thrives and multiplies. So in the summer, when humans seek to cool off and enjoy themselves, the chances are highest that both species will interact. Because this makes it hard to avoid, millions of people regularly have contact with the amoeba, especially in warmer climates, and many people even seem to have antibodies against it. And this is mostly okay. You can even swallow it without consequences. Things turn bad when people dive or swim in water contaminated with the amoeba, and water splashes high up into their noses. In a single drop of lake water, there Ooh. are millions of viruses. Yo, 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 this, this is kind of scary, because, like... I don't know, I mean, I don't have any, I don't know if I, probably, probably most of us have gotten in contact with this, but like, it's it's kind of like, the way, the way he describes it is scary, because like, it's like, uh, there's this movie I saw, like, it's an anime, actually, it's called Parasite, too, like, uh, the little parasite, like, it just enters somewhere, and then it takes over your whole, like, brain, basically, and you become the parasite in the end. Yeah, this is kind of like, yeah, you know, this is kind of scary. So after they eat your brain, you're dead. And a baby, and that isn't really a big deal. But Negleria fowleri is different. Let's zoom into the nose of an unsuspecting victim enjoying a great summer day and see what happens. Uh oh. First of all, the amoeba doesn't really want to be inside your nose, as it's not really looking for trouble. It just wants to eat a few bacteria. Instead, it's greeted by your natural defenses. Unfortunately for humans, Negleria fowleri happens to be exceptionally good at generally flying under the radar of your immune system. For example, the inside of your nose is covered by mucosa, a slime filled with chemicals that kill or stun possible invaders or alert immune cells. But Negleria fowleri is not particularly bothered by them and instead calmly checks out the scenery, mildly annoyed about the whole ordeal. Now, if you are unlucky, the tiny critter stumbles over something that actually sparks its interest. Nerve cells. Your nose is filled with a large network of olfactory nerve cells that pick up molecules from the outside and transmit their information to your olfactory bulb, the center of smell in your brain. To do their job, these cells talk to each other by releasing various messenger chemicals and recognizing them via specific receptors. One of the most important of these chemicals is acetylcholine. Through sheer evolutionary bad luck, Negleria fowleri happens to have receptors that recognize acetylcholine. And it seems to attract them irresistibly, a little like moths that are attracted by light. 
So as your olfactory nerve cells do their job, using plenty of acetylcholine to talk to the brain, Nagleria fowleri enters your tissue. It yes. seems to follow the chemical signals upstream. Oh, I thought it was going to eat them. Yo, that's crazy though. This is like, it's kind of interesting. The way, the way he's describing this stuff, it's like, it's like the, this little red guy is the bad villain, the bad guy. It's crazy. This actually kills people. Yo, it's different. Neutrophils, crazy suicide warriors, begin to attack the amoebae. Individually, they have no chance against them, as the invaders are large and pretty buff fighters, used to dealing with tough enemies. Oh, but it's only one of so the, the one of this red the guy. Intruders and kill them either by vomiting chemicals that punch holes into them, or by literally ripping parts of them off and devouring them. But the Nagleria fowlery train is still on track, and while the neutrophil attacks slow them down, they continue to follow the olfactory nerves to their final destination, your brain. This process can take between one and nine days, and you'll probably not notice anything during that time. Until the amoebae reach the olfactory bulb, the center of smell and entrance to your brain. Your brain cells are nothing more than helpless victims, and they all release that wonderful acetylcholine. Nagleria fowlery initiates a massacre and releases an onslaught of various attack molecules. Some of them are basically little bombs that rip holes into your cells on contact so their pieces can be eagerly consumed. The Nagleria fowlery is now multiplying. Yo, I bet the brain tastes good if these, if these uh, little bugs are after that. No, cause yo, like I'd be, I'd be thinking like the brain should probably have the most protection. Like all the cells should just bundle up there. Cause why not? Like, cause I'd be thinking like my, uh, my ideal body, like the, all the cool cells would be at the top, like in, like close to your brain. So like whenever something is about to attack your brain, it gets taken down. Cause like, cause the, let me see like like your feet like you don't really need i mean you probably you probably need some cells down there to protect you but like most of the important stuff should be guarded that's what i think because now you're in trouble this thing's about to eat you out like i wonder how you take it out though because this seems like you're just about to die and it's also becoming really creepy in a feeding frenzy, it can develop up to a dozen suckers called food cups that look like giant eerie mouths. The amoebae engage your brain cells, suck them in, and rip large bites out of them while they're still alive. What? Now things escalate quickly, and the disease that will kill you sets in. Alerted by the massacre, millions of immune cells, neutrophils, Eosinophils and microglias invade the infected Bro, tissue. Those should have been there in the first problem. place. Your immune system is but dangerous like, of course it's and not, not exactly a careful fighter. It's like burning down a forest to kill the wolves inside it. A really bad idea. Uh oh, don't tell me he's going to attack waste itself. No time and attack the amoeba using all the weapons available to them, from chemicals to trying to eat them alive. Neutrophils explode themselves to erect barriers spiked with deadly chemicals. A fierce battle ensues. Nagleria fowlery can actually fight back, itself attacking and killing many immune cells. The immune system now throws everything it has at the invader, but in vain. The complement system, tiny protein bombs that can kill intruders on their own, are easily disabled. Antibodies, usually one of your super weapons, are just destroyed or swallowed. A high fever that usually slows enemies down does nothing, as the amoeba actually thrives in the heat. All the while, the amoebae continue to multiply, fight, and devour your brain. Oh, so what I'm getting from this, you just gotta like, like go to Antarctica basically, or just go into like frozen cold water, like ice water, like take an ice bath. I mean, you won't do that when you're sick, but like, I guess that would slow this down. No, but like, then this thing was made to kill people if that's the case, because all your cells, if they can't fight it, then why? Because this thing looks like the, like, it's just the top villain in, when it enters your body. I'm sure there's worse things than this, but like, like why? Uh, I guess, I guess her bodies are that weak though. This does make me happy because it's just like, I see like the bodies fighting a, a battle it's gonna lose. Cause like, what? There's like, tons of these 
and your body, all it can do is destroy itself. Yeah, this isn't fun to watch. I'm, I'm just scared. Cells. A disastrous chain reaction is taking place. Yeah, see, this one is a one, one cells way do when battle. They fight is to cause inflammation, which directs large amounts of fluid from your bloodstream into the site of an infection. Uh -oh. So as the battle rages on without a clear winner, more and more fluid enters the brain. At this point, the human will feel symptoms that quickly escalate. It all begins pretty vaguely, a headache, fever, nausea, and vomiting. As the battle spreads rapidly through the brain, serious symptoms appear, from confusion, inability to concentrate, to fatigue, seizures, and hallucinations. Mm. The brain swells up massively, but can't expand due to the bones surrounding it. So it compresses and disables the brainstem that controls things like breathing. Oh, poor Usually, guy. Usually, within a week, the patient dies. Damn! Up to 97% of the patients infected by the amoeba share this fate. In almost what? all cases, by the time an infection by Negleria... Hey, I thought you could solve this, yo. Oh. Oh, that's... That's dangerous, then. Uh, and I was just thinking you could just, like, sneeze it out before, like, it enters too far. But, like, yo. Alright, man. You just die like that? Damn, that's that's pretty scary. Calorie though. is recognized. The disastrous battle for the brain is already so far along that there is almost nothing to be done. What? Not only do we currently not have effective treatments, there are also an abundance of open questions about how an amoeba that usually enjoys its life in open water is able to overcome our immune system so effectively. So, how worried do you need to be about this horrifying killer amoeba? Well, not very. While the Negleria phalari is clearly extremely deadly, and the infection truly horrible, there have only been a few hundred cases in the last few decades. Oh. You are way more likely to drown in a pool than to get infected. Not only does the amoeba need to be flushed high up your nose, it also needs to get a good grip, and it also has to make its way through the first lines of your defenses. Ultimately, Negleria phalari is neither evil nor a huge public health risk. But every year, some unlucky people have to deal with it. We still have so much to learn about it, Damn. and until we find a way to treat it, Negleria phalari will continue to be this vague and horrifying thing, hunting in puddles and lakes, and sometimes pools. Yeah, that's not Usually fun. Usually for bacteria, and very occasionally for people. Oh, hey. Who are you? It's me, your existential dread. Um, okay. I'm here to make you question your own existence and everything you hold dear in life. Could you not, please? Too late. Just look at all these amazing posters full of hum- Yo, this uh, little virus right here, that's scary. That's scary. I'm not gonna lie, that just- um, I mean, I'm I'm glad there's only like a couple hundred cases, but it's, yeah, you just die not knowing what killed you. You're like, that's that's pretty crazy, bro. I'm not even, I'm just shocked because I think like, I mean, it's small enough to enter your body, but like usually stuff that live outside your body like that. I don't know. I just expect them to die so quick when they enter you. Yeah, this stuff, bro. When it comes to diseases that enter your brain like this, yeah, leave me out. I'm not, I, yeah. See, this is why I don't swim. That's why I can't even swim. Hey, but yeah, you know, I don't know. I just hope no one has this stuff. But like, yeah, if you made it this far, thank you, and have a nice day.